Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. In the Pew Bible, it's found on page 1815. For you, dear brothers, you have been given freedom, not freedom to do wrong, but freedom to love and serve each other. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love others as you love yourself. Here in today's reading. The message today is titled, Serving the Body of Christ. Three of our members will share with us why they serve our church and our community. Marilyn, Reba, and Adam. been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. I was born into the church, I was baptized here, attended Sunday school, I participated in the sixth grade confirmation class with Reverend Goldie, took my first communion here on a holy Thursday night. As I moved into junior high and high school, I enjoyed the fellowship of the MYF. As a child, my brownie troop was sponsored here at Epworth, and as an adult, I was married in this very sanctuary. And even though I moved away and was living in Mount Laurel and then Cherry Hill, and there were a lot of other Methodist churches that were much closer to home, I continued to come here to worship every Sunday. It was my weekly opportunity to spend time with my mom and dad, go out to breakfast with them afterwards, and I continue that ritual with my mom to this day. Throughout my adult life, I've had the opportunity to serve at work in a variety of ways. I served a couple of terms on the Finance Committee and was also part of the Nominations Committee for several years. About 10 or 12 years ago, Jean Cook approached me after the service one Sunday and asked if I would consider becoming a member of the Planned Giving Committee. By profession, I've worked in the financial services industry for my entire career, and for the past 20 years, those years have been in private banking and wealth management business. So Gene somehow had the idea that that made me a qualified investment portfolio manager. Unbeknownst to her at the time, my career is in the marketing side of the business. But while I wasn't in a position to do investment analysis, I did then and continue to have a strong interest in helping people to understand the importance of financial planning, philanthropic giving, and the many ways that people can use their assets to achieve both their financial and personal goals and wishes. So I willingly told Jean that I'd be happy to use my background and experience and serve as a member of Planned Giving. In my professional life, it's all about communicating to families how they can plan and create a legacy. And so it goes with the service that I can offer to Epworth through my role with Planned Giving. In the end, it's all about sharing how members of Epworth can make a commitment to contribute to the legacy of our church. Through this work, our committee has been able to carefully invest endowment funds that members of the church have established, and to use those funds, as the givers have directed, for valuable purposes, such as improving the church buildings and property, educating the children of the church, missions projects, and serving our youth ministry. Perhaps the most rewarding part of that service is the fact that each year we have the opportunity to review applications from individuals who are seeking funds to finance their education to join the ministry of the church. It's really a very humbling experience to read the applications and look at the DVDs where the applicants are sharing very personal stories about why they've chosen to pursue that calling. You realize how great their desire is to serve God regardless of the personal financial sacrifices that they're making to do so. At a different end of the spectrum, I've also chosen to serve at Worth by participating as a member of the Bell Choir. Over many years and through the leadership of several different directors, I'm able to combine my love of music with the ability to participate in a very special type of worship. At the beginning of each rehearsal, Diane's opening prayer speaks to how we are bringing to God's glory. Wednesday night practices are always enjoyable and an opportunity for us to share in fellowship with each other. And when our bell choir shares their collective talents in the worship service, it's always rewarding to have members of the congregation tell us how much they've enjoyed the music, even when we know that we've missed some notes along the way. 
When Charlie and Janet asked the three of us to speak today, they suggested that we answer the question of why not let someone else do it. For me, throughout both my business and personal life, I've never been one to sit back and wait for someone else to step up and take the lead. In corporate life, that's how you get passed over and you miss opportunities for new, challenging, and rewarding assignments. The same holds true for my life here at Epworth. If everyone sat back and expected someone else to always volunteer, we wouldn't be where we are today as a vibrant community contributor. Everyone here today has their own unique set of talents and interests. Everyone is good at something and can contribute in ways that can help to breathe even more life into the church. In choosing to serve by using your talents and sharing what you truly enjoy, collectively we can ensure that the legacy of Epworth will live in on for many years to come. Thank you. Good morning. Like Marilyn, I grew up here in, in uh, Epworth as a child, and as so many teenagers do, I kind of drifted away in my mid-teens. Mid um, but after I was married and my husband and I returned to the Triborough area in the 70s, uh, we began coming here, at least I did, with the children. Um, I, I wanted to have them become familiar with the faith that had carried me through my life up to that point. And I found that Epworth was very warm and welcoming to a returning member. Um, why I do what I do in the church is related to a number of things. As a child, my parents were always very involved in whatever group or organization they were a part of. They held office, they headed committees, they participated in, in the background as well. And I became very well aware that any group or organization is only as successful if each member contributes in some way, whatever they may, uh, whatever they're able to, depending on their skills or abilities. And I found that carries true uh, in so many ways uh, in church. Obviously, I didn't. I've always said I don't sing well, so I'm not going to be a member of the choir. I'll spare you that, that uh, torture. Um, and I really never thought I was knowledgeable enough to teach a Sunday school class. And when I was approached about doing that years ago, uh, I was McCurdy. I said, well, first of all, I'm not a member yet. Returning, I haven't renewed my membership yet. She says, well, you, you do that, and then we'll call on you. And she did. Um, and I said, but I really don't know enough about that. I know the childhood stories that you hear. Um, but she persisted and she said, you know, you always have to remember that you know more than the children do. So they can still learn from you. And everything is laid out. And it, and it was. So I taught Sunday school for a number of years, uh, seven or eight years. And then I moved on into other positions, served on the missions committee. Uh, I, I, one point I did play in the bell choir as well. I've been in the background, I've assisted many com committees in the church, um, but then there came a time in the 90s when I felt called to do more. Now, I'm a registered nurse and I had been employed from the time I got out of nursing school when I was in my 20s, um, but I felt that there was some way I should be able to use those abilities to benefit the members of the church. And then I became aware of parish nursing. Uh, I attended several seminars and I went through the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference of the Methodist Church to become certified as a parish nurse. I returned and then had to uh, present my case to the members of the, the church, uh, the various bodies, and justify why this was needed. That was done, they approved, and this has become uh, an entity that has continued to this day, sometimes more actively than other years, um, depending on how my, my own personal situation and work situation were, uh, were involved. I felt called to do this. I truly feel that I, had, that I was, was called by God to do this, 
and I felt strongly enough that if Beckworth had not accepted me in that position, I was ready to uh, consider this as a position in another church, not to leave the Epworth membership, but to do parish nursing with another congregation that would welcome that, uh, that service. Fortunately, Epworth did approve it, and I continue today, and I do it for the love of God. I don't do it because I have to. I haven't done any of my service here in Epworth because it was an obligation that I felt I had to do, that, that it was just a service obligation. I do it for the love of God. And that's, that's really how I can leave it to, to, with you. I do feel that whatever we do in the church, whatever role we play, that it's incumbent upon us to mentor others who will be able and ready to pick up that role as we kind of fade into the distance or step into the background and be supportive of what they're doing and let the younger people in the church pick up that role. Thank you.
When Frank came home on hospice, a neighbor and two friends came over to take care of him while I went to work. When I needed to set up a schedule for the second week, Glenn sent out an email to the church members. The response was wonderful. Even though Frank passed at the end of the week, and we didn't need those who volunteered to help, the fact that they were willing to give their time was awesome. There were others who helped, some with Veterans Administration, and some who sent meals when Frank passed. Some stopped by, some came to the memorial service, some spoke kindly of him at the service. When my brother Leon was so ill, and my niece called me to come up and see him in New York State, friends helped me get a room so I could see him. I cannot say enough about the generosity of spirit of these wonderful people, nor could I ever thank them enough for being there. Even now I have some amazing relatives and friends who are helping me through. My heart is full. God is good. These have been examples of people sharing God's love with someone in need. We can all bring Christ into this world by unselfishly giving of ourselves without asking for anything in return. <clears throat> God will take care of that without us asking. I do believe that what you do comes back to you, sometimes multiplied. We lead by example and by encouraging others to join us. Other people are watching, as are our children. Wouldn't it be great if we were to show them how to give God's love to someone in need by showing God's love ourselves? I realize that we all can't do physical things to help someone, but we can all show God's love to someone in need by offering a word of encouragement, a smile, a hug, a hello, or even an ear just to listen. These things let people know that they matter and hopefully lift their spirits. As most of you know, I am a hugger. I hope to cheer people up for sympathy, for a simple hello, and to let people know that I love them and that I care. I drive a school bus and always say good morning in the morning and have a good day when they get off the bus. When I pick them up in the afternoon, I say hello or howdy, and when they get off the bus, I tell them to have a good night. Now, many of them give me a cheerful good morning before I can say it, or respond with good morning when they get on the bus. The same holds true for when they get off the bus. It's not just being polite. It makes a pleasant and cheerful way to start their day and mine. They are actually smiling when they get on the bus. Isn't it wonderful to be able to make someone's day simply by sharing God's love in a small way? Even a small act of kindness, offering to take a picture of someone with their camera so the whole family can get in the picture. Something as simple as holding the door or picking up something off the ground that someone has dropped. We all do not have the resources to do big things for people, but we sure can do small things in a big way. We will never be able to thank God or the people who have done things for us enough, but we can pass them forward and help someone else. Life is what it is. It is how you react to life that matters. It makes all the difference in the world. I pray our hearts will be filled with God's love and that his love and his light will shine through us. Thank you.